The 30th of April, 1993, is the date on the document with which CERN, the European Particle Physics Lab, gave up the right to charge royalties for World Wide Web technology. It's an important date and it's an important document. It allowed the web to take off. For me, editing the specifications and writing code and shepherding the loose international group of enthusiasts and early adopters, I knew that it was absolutely essential. I knew that none of the people I was talking to would have been involved at all if they had thought that they were buying into some commercially controlled product. Ten years later, the lesson of that document is just as important. We have had a wave of technology, and despite the overhyped dot-com boom, ten years later, we have the world operating more efficiently in lots of ways, and there are things that we can do now which we just couldn't do before. So the web we have, if we had not had that document from CERN, we would not have the web. But the web's not done. There are many more things we can do with web technology, more technology which is coming along, which also must be developed in a web-like way, in a decentralized way. There's voice browser technology to, which will completely change the things we can do with human interface. There's web services technology and semantic web technology which will allow machines to talk to each other to do electronic commerce and all kinds of other things, allowing them to actually solve problems for us instead of just bring the problems in to us in the form of email and web pages, which we see every day. So there are lots of exciting things, and for just the same reason, these must be released into the public domain, or they must be made available so that at least the basic infrastructure, the web standards must be available so that they can be implemented free of royalties. So it's good to look back after 10 years and see how important it was. Look at the other technologies which were taking off at that time, uh, which didn't happen partly because with some of them the intellectual property rights were not clear. Some of them, there was the hint of royalties down the road, which really put off both the individual programmer who was going to uh, devote some time in the middle of the night and also the corporation, which was going to allow some, some of their researchers to play in the field. So we need to remember that when great things come out of research labs, uh, whether they're corporate or government funded, then we must remember that in the case of web technology, that investment must be ploughed in. It's very important for the new thing to grow that the infrastructure be royalty free. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking CERN for being the place that it is, for being the place where I was allowed to play with the World Wide Web, to write those first few programs uh, and have such a lot of fun. I hope everybody's having a lot of fun now and dreaming up lots of ideas. And I'm sure that lots of exciting things will come out of CERN in unexpected ways. We remember that we don't look for the short term, the visibility of some bottom line where we see how we make a product out of it in a few year, days, when we make something like new web technologies in the near future, in the di more distant future, which we really can't anticipate today. So with that thought and with thanks to CERN for being and for that very important document uh, 10 years ago, I leave you. Thank you. So uh, we're sitting here in front of the um, first web server and uh, I have the, one of the very old pages in uh, one of the very old browsers. As you can see we have uh, text, we have images and drawings and diagrams. Uh, we can also, and this is perhaps the most interesting bit, we can actually uh, click on the page and, uh, and start typing away and adding, adding stuff if the page belongs to us. So there is no difference between this and, uh, and a word processor. That is how in the beginning you actually organized your stuff. You, you began with your home page, which is on your machine. You edit all there and of course you have no such thing as lousy bookmarks. You just put them into your text with, uh, with your comments and you highlight these things and you connect them to whatever you want to connect them. Um, 
and uh, that uh, was uh, 1990. So was the, the, the World Wide Web which started, was it about exchange of uh, information between scientists or was it about something different? It what was, was the basic idea behind it? I think there were two basic ideas. One was to make the documents that we had available on the network so that whoever wanted these could find them and get at them. And the other very important part was that we wanted it to be a tool for collaboration so that, as you saw, I can modify the page and if somebody else has the access rights to that same page, he or she can also modify that page. And so we can, at a distance, work together and develop documents together without anything uh, impeding us. Going back to my earlier question, so to what extent do you think how significant the uh, development of World, uh, of World Wide Web had on internet, development of internet and the increase uh, in the number of users? I think the internet uh, grew gradually through the introduction of new services all the time, such as uh, email and FTP. And then in, at the end of the 80s, uh, the web came, and quite clearly the web was the thing that spread the internet out of the academic community, which had built it, uh, into the, uh, the public area and uh, into commerce. And then, of course, later on, again, uh, there was the utilization of more and more bandwidth and pictures and videos and so forth, which pushed the internet. Uh, so uh, the web definitely did push the internet to developing into a very much wider uh, arena, but just like many of the other services have done before. So what would be now, as you say, the driving force for the internet now, for the problem to, to solve for the internet? In which way, in which direction it's going to? I think the, the, the most um, uh, obvious way it is going to go is uh, much higher bandwidth, much more information, much more visual material, which eats up a lot of space. And, uh, and needs fast links. So uh, the next stage of development definitely will be very much faster links which come down into the home, fiber optic cables that come into the home, uh, so that uh, you will get the, the, the speed. And also the always on, so that you don't have to dial up, but that you're always on. And you, you, it's there like, like the electricity is there, it's always there. That's the obvious thing. Perfect. That was really good. <laughs> okay. You have back and forward. Yeah, yeah exactly. You don't have next and previous. The no, next and previous were very, very useful functions that we lost. That, that's the one that I regret most, actually. Oh, yeah. next and previous. Because, you can uh, move the windows around. Do you want me to move windows around? Okay. You want me to uh, move just show the different menu. Okay. Show, maybe a different menu. show how it behaves. Uh, I, can, uh, just I can make a new file and uh, save it. And, uh,